In this video, we are going to work with units in the metric system. So on this first type of problem, we are being asked to convert from centimeters to meters. Now, there's a little sentence that I use to help me remember how to convert within the metric system. And so the sentence says this, King Hector danced merrily down central Maine. So it's just a silly little sentence, but what it helps me remember is that these are going to be your kilo units, so kilometers, um, kilograms, kiloliters. Hector would be your hecto. Danced would stand for your deca. Now the middle, this stands for either your meter, your liter, or your gram, which are all your different metric units of measurement. Um, down stands for your deci. Central stands for your centi. And main stands for your milli. So in this particular example, we are being asked to go from centimeters, which would be here, to meters, which would be here. And so if you count how far and which direction you are moving, that tells you how to move your decimal. So my original number was 224.4, and I noticed that to go from centi to meters, I went two to the left. So I'll take my decimal, move it two to the left, and that gives you your correct place for your decimal in the other unit. So that would be the same as 2.244 meters. In this next example, we have a doctor recommends that a patient takes three 200 milligram chewable tablets of calcium each day. So notice three a day, that would be 600 milligrams a day. And so the first question says, how many milligrams of calcium will the patient take in a week? Well, there are seven days in a week. So 600 milligrams a day times seven days. And I would say that that patient takes 4,200 milligrams each week. Now they're asking me, how many grams will the patient take in a week? So now I'm gonna to have to convert milligrams to grams. So if I go back up to my chart, my milligrams are here, my grams would be in the middle. So notice I am moving one, two, three places to the left. So my decimal is understood to be to the right of the zero here, and if I move it one, two, three places to the left, then that is the same as saying that this person takes 4.2 grams per week. On the next question, we are trying to indicate the metric unit of measurement that you would use to express the area of a football field. Now, you've got to keep in mind that if we're just measuring distance, we just have a regular unit such as a meter or a centimeter. Anytime we are measuring area, we end up having what we call square units because areas have two dimensions. If we were measuring volume, we would have cubic units because volumes have three dimensions, th length, width, and height. So in this case, we're measuring area. So that comes down to the fact that we have to have square units, and then we have to decide, does it make more sense to say they are square kilometers or square meters? And so when we're comparing our, uh, the metric system to our system, anytime you think about kilometers, you need to think about things you would measure in miles. Whereas if you think about meters, you need to think about anything that you would either measure in feet or yards. And as we know with a football field, it's typically measured in yards. So the answer that would best be used in this case would be our square meters. Okay, now we're being asked, 
what the mass of a tea bag is about how much in terms of our metric system. So think about this. When we have a gram, you can think about that being the weight of a paper clip. So it's pretty light. Whereas when we think about kilograms, we think in terms of pounds. And so 2.2 pounds is one kilogram. And then of course, when you think of milligrams, those are teeny tiny. They're, you know, one, um, they're much smaller than a gram. And so I would think about something like not even the size of a grain of salt. Okay, so if we're talking about a tea bag, it definitely doesn't weigh pounds. It's certainly more than a grain of salt. So probably the one that makes more sense here is the fact that it would weigh about four grams. Now with this next problem, you do need the formula for converting from Fahrenheit into Celsius. And so that formula says my Celsius will equal to five over nine times your Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 degrees. And so they have given me a Fahrenheit temperature of 47. So if I plug that in for F, then I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 32. And so 47 minus 32 is going to leave me with 15. And then if I go ahead and multiply that out, five times 15 would give me 75. And then I divide by nine. And at that point, you can just punch it out on a calculator. Um, they tell me to round it to the nearest 10. So 75 divided by nine leaves me with 8.3. So that would be the same as 8.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, on this next one, we are converting. We have 91 kilograms and we're gonna convert to pounds. Now to do this, we use unit fractions. And since we're starting with kilograms, in order to make those units cancel, you're gonna to have to put kilograms on the bottom of a fraction compared to pounds on the top. And so you'll notice in our table here, they give us that relationship. So we see that 0.45 kilograms is the same as one pound. And so notice what happens here with that particular unit fraction is your kilograms will cancel and your answer that you'll be left with is pounds. And then you just go ahead and you're gonna multiply 91 times one, and that gives you 91. And then you're gonna divide it by 0.45. And again, just on a calculator, just dividing that out. So 91 divided by 0.45, and we're going to round it to the nearest hundredth. So that would be two decimal places. So 202.22 pounds. All right, and then finally, it says that for each kilogram of a person's weight, 2.5 milligrams of a drug is to be given. So they wanna know what dosage should be given to a child who weighs 89 pounds. So we're gonna have to first convey, convert that child's weight into kilograms. So if we have 89 pounds, your pounds this time have to go on bottom, your kilograms will have to go on top. And again, go, going back to this table, one pound would be the same as 0.45 kilograms. So notice in that particular case, the pounds would cancel. So you're left with kilograms. And then we're just gonna get on a calculator and take 89 times the 0.45. And so we learned that this child weighs 40.05 kilograms. And the instruction said that for every kilogram, they are to be given 2.5 milligrams of a drug. So we're gonna multiply that weight by two and a half milligrams. So the total dosage in this case would be 100.13 milligrams.